Detroit basketball. Let's go. Let's go, man. Woo. I'm still trying to process what just happened. It was so many highs and so many lows. And so many lows and so many highs in this game. Moments where it looked like the game was over. It was in our hands. Moments when it looked like the game was over. It was in their hands. Oof. And you're just playing these. You're just playing these thoughts out in your mind based off what you think is going to happen. And it keeps changing every 30 seconds. By the way, I'm fighting off a cold tonight. So bear with me. I'm still going to give you all this recap, right? But uh, just bear with me if I sound a little, if I sound a little stuffed up. Man, okay, so I don't even know where to start. Um, let's start with the score. <laughs> um, so the Pistons win tonight in overtime, 123 to 121 at home over the Miami Heat in their first game of the NBA Cup. So they now sit at 5-7 and seven overall in their 1-1 Cup play. Yes, the NBA in-season tournament began tonight, and it started off with a bang, man. So the Pistons sported their custom blue court tonight. It was blue, black, and gold, I think. And I must say, I do like it better than the one last year. It's a little bit easier on the eyes, and it just it just looks better. But let me know what you guys thought about that court. Okay, so like we always do, let's start with the initial thoughts, right? I'm still trying to calm down from this game. This is crazy. So the Pistons got JD back tonight. Jalen Duran was active tonight. And Jimmy Butler was out with an ankle sprain for the Heat. So I came into this game, and I tweeted before this game that the Pistons should definitely win this game, right? Especially being down Jimmy Butler, and we're getting back Jalen Duran. We're just a better team. If we bring the effort for four quarters, like I always say, if you bring the effort for four quarters and you're the more talented team, you will win the game more times than not. And that was the case tonight. It looked like Jalen Duran was wearing an ankle brace on the ankle, um, and he was moving well. He didn't seem to be hampered. He wasn't favoring his other leg or anything like that. He really seemed comfortable, and he looked like he was healthy. And he was active on the glass. I have to say, he was active on the glass. Defensively, he was really there. He was getting some chase down blocks. The Heat weren't getting too many offensive rebounds. They weren't all over the boards, right? And we'll get to that later as far as our front court play, believe me. But JD looked good. He looked good, man. I was happy to see him back on the court, locked in defensively for the most part. But overall, his presence was much needed going against Bam Adebayo, right? Bam Adebayo was a monster. He's a monster in the glass, and he's much improved offensively now, too, even shooting the three ball this year. So we needed JD tonight, and he definitely was a big part of why we won this game. The Heat came out cold to start this game, man. They were missing a lot of open shots. I think they were two for eight from three in the first quarter, so they didn't really shoot it well. And the Pistons took advantage, right? We've talked about in, in games past how the Pistons have struggled getting out to good starts and how oftentimes two or three minutes into the game, JB's calling a timeout, right? Trying to get his guys regrouped. But that wasn't the case tonight. The Pistons took advantage of the Heat's early cold shooting and they came out and jumped on them early. I must say, man, from jump, the Pistons did look motivated tonight. They were also aware that this was game one of the NC's tournament and they played like it. You can see the effort was there for the most part. The Heat got back into the game in the second quarter, though. The Pistons let the foot off the gas a little bit. And that's when the Heat started knocking down threes. They were 6 for 11 in that second quarter. So that got them back into the game. Overall, the Pistons were efficient. They had 18 assists on 19 makes in the first half. And they were 15 for 15 from the free throw line also in the first half. Only five turnovers in the first half. It really got sloppy in the second half, which we'll get to. But in the first half, they did take care of the basketball. That takes us to the second half. Specifically the third quarter. Tim Hardaway Jr. had a very scary play. Very scary play in that third quarter. So here's what happened. He tried to take a charge on Bam Adebayo. They don't call it. He gets back up, tries to take another charge, and as the shot is going up and he's falling down, Jalen Duren is trying to come help side to block the shot. And Tim Hardaway, as he gets knocked over, his head runs into Jalen Duren's knee, just like this. And it and it looked it looked bad, man. It looked it looked really bad. As soon as he went down, I saw I saw his head leaking right away i saw him grab for his head and i saw him start leaking right away so i i immediately thought he had a concussion I, I was hoping it was just a concussion and there wasn't anything more serious than that right um but i saw it right away i saw it right away and it, it was ugly man you hate this and you could tell Jalen Darren felt bad you could see he had his hands on his head like this he you could see he really felt bad for for, for hurting this guy like that i want to say something to y'all everybody who was at that game tonight and i'm talking to you directly Everybody who was at that game that saw what happened and started chanting Jared Goff, unacceptable. Absolutely unacceptable. You got a player that just got kneed in the head, full speed, in the back of the head. He's down. You see he's not getting up. Listen, man. 
I'm a, I'm, I'm a Jerry Goff fan like anybody else. I'm a Lions fan like anybody else. I've been watching the Lions since I was four years old. I watched Barry Sanders live. I watched Johnny Morton live. I watched Herman Moore live. I watched Jason Hansen live. I watched all these guys live. I love football in this Lions team as much as the next guy. And I'm very, very excited for the turnaround that they've had, right? It's uplifted the entire city, no doubt. I'm just as happy as anybody else. But you have to be able to read the room, bro. You had Pistons players who were surrounding Tim Hardaway because he wasn't getting up. They heard Jared Goff, Jared Goff chants and they're looking around like, Are you serious? Right now? Right now. Unacceptable. Unacceptable. You got to be better than that, man. That is not a way to endear yourself to this team. That is not a way to endear. I tell you this much. I bet you Jared Goff wasn't happy with that. Because he understands how to read the room. That's unacceptable, man. Y'all got to calm down. I understand everybody's excited. And I understand the Lions are probably Super Bowl bound. I understand. I get it. But you have to understand how to read the room. Why would you do that then? Why? There are a thousand ways to get this team back into the game. There are a thousand ways to get the crowd back into the game. Why go there? Why then? In that moment. Unacceptable. And y'all should be ashamed of yourselves. I'm usually a positive. Y'all know me. I'm usually very positive on here, right? I'm honest, but I'm positive. But I'm being honest right now. Unacceptable. Period. There's no there's no two ways about that. It's just unacceptable. And I'm embarrassed for everybody who did that. Because you represent our city. And you did not represent us in a good way. All right. So now we got that out the way. Fourth quarter, man. Pistons were up nine points with a minute 30 left. And Tyler Hero comes down and hits three straight threes. Tyler Hero had a great game, by the way. Tyler Hero... Maybe an all-star this year. He's a very, very good player. He had 40 points on better than 50%, right? He had a really good game. He had 10 threes. I think he made 10 threes tonight. He's a player, man. He's a hooper. Like, I'm not taking nothing away from him. But the reason he had those three threes is because the Pistons kept turning the ball over. They, the Pistons kept turning the ball over. And I understand that the Pistons do not get a fair whistle. They do not get a fair whistle. There was a play, which we'll get to later, that was just so egregious. Like, are you kidding? How do you not see that? But we'll get to that. So the whistle was definitely favoring the Miami Heat in their physical style of play. But there were so many times where the referee just swallowed their whistle to where you was just so obvious to where you could hear the slap. It was bad. But despite all that, the Pistons cannot turn the ball over the way they did in that fourth quarter and in overtime. They can't do it. And I got to say this, man. K got to be better. K got to be better, man. He played a really, really good first half. He played a really good first half. He was, he was making all the right reads. He was not forcing the issue. I think he only had one turnover in the first half. He finished with seven, right? But the late game turnovers, there were a few possessions in a row where he turned it over in overtime that really hurt us. And it was after we would get a stop. It was. It just looked very uncharacteristic, the type of turnovers, because it wasn't like he was telegraphing passes or he thought he saw something off a read and it wasn't there or it broke down quickly. It was just one-on-one -on -one stuff. And like I said, I know they weren't giving him a favorable whistle and they normally don't. And they really didn't tonight. But on those possessions late down the stretch, I don't care if he had 10 in the first half, right? It's just those late game situations where we can't afford, because momentum is so important, right? The momentum is so important and possessions are so important in that moment, right? Possessions mean so much in late game situations. And on a few of those plays, he was just getting stripped, right? Let's just call it what it is, right? He has to be more careful with the basketball, especially in late game situations. But to his credit, to his credit, he stayed with it. He stayed with it. He wasn't running from the ball. There were a few times late in the fourth quarter and in overtime when I was saying to myself, okay, that's a few turnovers in a row, guys. Who wants the ball? Because sometimes you can get a little bit passive or hesitant because you don't want to be the one to make the next turnover, right? But to K's credit, he stepped up and he came down and got a huge and one off a tough shot. K's not afraid. He doesn't get rattled, right? He didn't play well tonight. This was not his best game. He had a great first half, but overall he didn't play great, especially late game situations. So that's one thing that he has to work on. He has to continue to work on that. And if that means getting the ball in Jaden's hands more down the stretch to give yourself a chance to rest, then do that. Right? If you want to post up Tobias Harris, you do that. If you want to get a shot for Tim Hardaway, who's not there, but in normal situations, you do that. The turnovers laid down the stretch, but they really, they really hurt the Pistons. And without that, Tyler Hero doesn't have a chance 
to build off of each of the last turnovers to get those three straight threes, right? So it's a, it was a game of momentum. And you really add to their momentum when you just give them the ball right back. When you give them unforced turnovers, that fuels their momentum. And that may tell them that there's blood in the water. And that's why it's so important in late game situations not to turn the ball over. Because of the scoreboard, obviously, but because of this as well. But there was a play <laughs> where there was a jump ball, dead ball, jump ball between Bam and Cade. And Bam literally jumps up and holds Cade's arm down like this. He just literally holds his arm down. It, interestingly enough, I was surprised he would even do that because he already has a height advantage. And Kate doesn't have an advantage as far as getting off the floor faster than him. So I don't even know why he would do that. It didn't even make sense why he would do that. And it's funny because I saw Kate go over to the ref and say, bro, I just told you this. I just told you this. So it seemed like Kate had already either briefed the referee on what was about to happen, or he had talked to him about something previously that the ref had missed, and he was telling him to look for it. And Kate said, I told you, I just told you about this. Like, I just, how do you not see this? How do you not call that when, I, when we just talked about this? <laughs> so I don't know what's going on, man, but he is not getting a fair whistle. I've not seen a number one pick get this kind of treatment ever, ever. They just don't, res and there were so many other plays where Jalen Dale would get bumped in the backcourt and they won't call anything. The ref is standing right there. It's like, bro, what are you looking at? What are you not looking at? What's going on? <laughs> It was insane. And there were so many plays just like that where we just did not get the whistle. I understand, you know, re respecting a team like Miami because of how they play. But come on, bro. A foul is still a foul at the end of the day. And if you're calling it down there, you got to call it down here. We're at home. And they're getting official like they're the home team. It was insane. So 30 seconds left, right? 30 seconds left. And by this point, Jaden Navia fouled out. And that's very unfortunate because he was doing a solid job defensively late on Tyler Hero. Last fourth quarter play to get to overtime, Jaden Ivey guarded him one-on-one -on -one and he clamped him up and he shut him down, right? Overtime he fouled out, which was unfortunate. And that's really what led us to the Miami Heat going up two before this game really got crazy. So the Heat had the ball, shot clock turned off, and, and they iso Tyler Hero again. But this time because Jaden Ivey had fouled out, Malik Beasley's on him. When I saw that, I knew it was trouble. I knew it was trouble. I knew they were probably going to get a foul or a bucket. And that's no shade to Beasley, but Hero's a tough cover, man. He's tough cover, and Beasley's undersized. So Hero drives to the rim, gets Beasley off balance, pump fakes, gets Beasley in the air, shot off glass good. One second left on the clock. At this point, I'm thinking the game's over. And on the inbounding play, I see that Cade is inbounding the ball. Which, at first, I'm like, why is he inbound? Then I said, okay, maybe a back door. Because they only had one shot. So I knew K wasn't getting the shot when he was inbounding the ball. This wasn't enough time. So you see Jalen Duran at the top of the key. He back cuts for an alley-oop. And Bam Adebayo reacts late. JD catches it, throws it down. Tie game. Perfect pass from K. Perfect finish from JD. Perfect execution from the Pistons. Great call by JB Bickerstaff. Great call. Great call. Great call. Tie game, double overtime. Except... Miami calls a timeout that they didn't have. So the Pistons get to go to the free throw line with 0.1 seconds left on the clock to end the game. And Malik Beasley goes to the line. And, and normally that would be Tim Hardaway Jr. Because Tim Hardaway Jr. has been taking the bulk of the technical foul shots. And he wasn't available. So it had to be someone else. So it's Beasley. And I'm just saying to myself, please don't miss this free throw. Please do not miss this free throw. He makes it. He makes it. And the Pistons get the ball back. Pistons inbound the ball. Game over. Man, this, this was a crazy, crazy game. This was a crazy game. There were so many opportunities for the Pistons to win it. And they gave the Heat a lot of opportunities to, to win it as well. But the Pistons got it done. They got it done, man. At the end of the day, that's all that matters. Okay, so box score. Let's start with Kate. Kate had 21 points, 9 assists, 7 rebounds, 2 blocks, 7 turnovers again. On 6 of 15 shooting, 2 of 7 for 3, perfect 7 of 7 from the free throw line. So like I mentioned, I'm not going to only highlight the late turnovers, right? Because in that first half, he did play really, really well. Just finding guys, making the right reads, orchestrating the offense beautifully. It was great to see. It was just those late game situations that he has to improve on. And he's got to get those turnovers down. He had 6 in the second half, only had 1 in the first half. So we got to work on that. Got to keep working on that. He did give a lot of effort on defense as well. He had a few chase down blocks on Tyler Hero with a customary give me that ish trash talk after. And he had a nice no-look baseline pass to THJ in the corner. I don't know how he saw him. I didn't even see him on my flat screen. So I don't know how he saw him, but great vision and great pass. 
Let's get to Jaden. So I mentioned how Jaden did foul out, which is a rarity for him. He doesn't usually foul out. But he had 19 points, 9 rebounds, 7 assists, 1 steal, 3 turnovers, uh, 8 for 18 shooting, 1 of 5 from 3, 2 of 2 from the free throw line. So Jaden played a good game, man. He played another strong performance, a bounce back game from last game. You know, he didn't play well last game. He bounced back well. I got to say this too, man. Nobody on Miami can stay in front of him, especially with Jimmy out tonight. They didn't have a chance guarding him. And when the defense would collapse, he made the right pass. Seven assists to three turnovers. I'll take that. At halftime, he was asked about how he thought the court looked. And he said, it's cool, but we got to get a win. <laughs> he was just focused on getting the dub. And he's playing great defense, man. Great individual defense. Great help side defense. And he was getting on the boards, man. He had nine rebounds tonight. I've talked about it before, about how the Pistons, how everybody has been getting on the boards, right? It hasn't just been the front court, but our guards are crashing the glass. Cade and Jaden are getting on the glass. Even Tobias is getting on the glass. He has seven again tonight, which we'll get to. So this team is rebounding by committee, and I'd love to see that. Tobias Harris. Tobias played solid tonight, man. He had 18 points, seven rebounds, four assists, one steal, two turnovers, on seven to 15 shooting, two or four from three, two or two from the free throw line. So he played a good game. Um, there were a few shots that were coming up short again, a few gimmies that were coming up short in that second half. And once again, as I mentioned before, I think a lot of that is because of how much energy he's exerting defensively, right? He's having, he's being asked to rebound more. He's being asked to be more physical in the paint more. He's being asked to really body guys up in the paint. There were a few possessions where he played good individual defense on Bam Adebayo. And Adebayo is bigger than him. So I got to get to buy his credit. I'm not really too upset with him missing some shots that he should make. If he's giving us enough offensively and he's giving us everything he has on defense, I can live with a few misses here and there that he'd normally make. I can live with that. Let's get to Jalen Duran. So Jalen Duran, in his return, had 8 points, 11 rebounds, 5 assists, 2 blocks, 1 turnover, 4-5 shooting, over 2 from the free throw line. That was another thing we got to get to. Tonight, JD had an opportunity in the 4th quarter to tie the game late, and he missed both free throws. And the Pistons as a whole went 24 for 28 from the game. So outside of that, they shot great. They shot 90% from the game. Other than those two free throws. So those late game situation free throws and those late game possessions, like we mentioned earlier, got to get cleaned up. I think JD is shooting about 57% from the free throw line so far this year. So he's got to pick that up. He's actually talked about that. I think it was the 70s he shot last season. And he was saying that he needs to get that higher. So he definitely can't shoot 57% from the free throw line. And he can't go over too late. Right? So it's a mental thing. He's just got to stay locked in. But thankfully, it didn't cost us the game. But other than that, solid defense for most of the game. There were a few possessions, though, where he just didn't finish the play, right? There were a few times where Bam Adebayo had an easy layup because Jalen Duren was coming over help side and the guard would drop it off to Bam. But on a few possessions, Bam would miss the initial shot. And I think JD was expecting it to go in. And because of that, Bam stayed with it and got another couple offensive rebounds to get the shot to go. So I just need him to not assume the ball is going to go in just because it's an easy shot, point blank shot. But other than that, overall, in his first game back, he played solid. He played good enough for us to win. He had some crucial plays, some crucial blocks for us. He really just was committed to that paint. And that's what I love to see. If he just focuses on the defensive end, he will average a double-double for the season. Like tonight, he had 8 points, 11 rebounds. He would have had that double-double if he would hit those free throws, right? So that's all he has to do for now. Just focus on that end of the floor, and you're going to get rewarded on the offensive end. Let's get to a few guys on the bench. Malik Beasley, man, he continues to shine, bro. He continues to play well for this team. He had 21 points, 5 rebounds, 1 assist, 1 steal. He did have 4 turnovers on 7 for 17 shooting, 5 for 11 from 3. Two for three from the free throw line. Another strong game from him, man. He had a lot of big shots in that third quarter that we needed. I think he sensed that Tim Hardaway Jr.'s offense was just missing. So he took it upon himself to get some shots up. And a lot of those shots went in when we needed them, especially from three-point range. He shot nearly 50% from behind the line. So shout out to him, and he played another good game. Fontecchio. Fontecchio had 10 points, three assists, two rebounds, two turnovers, on four for eight shooting, two five from three. He was hustling tonight. He was hustling tonight, right? Defensively, he's not ever lacking for him. And he made some big plays for us. The thing I've said with him all season long, I like him most when he's just catching and shooting. When he's catching and shooting, it's money. If he catches it and has to put the ball on the floor and reload, I'm not as confident. He did have three assists tonight. I got to give him credit. But still, overall, I like him more times than not. Just catching it and going straight up. Catching it and going straight up. But he played a good game tonight. I got to give him credit. Ron Holland had two points, four rebounds, one assist in 16 minutes. Over two from the field, two or two from the free throw line. So he didn't play a ton. He played 16 minutes, but 
his presence was felt when he was in the game. He gave the Pistons a jolt defensively that they needed. And he also continues to show his vision. He made some great plays. He made a great, he had a great outlet pass to Malik Beasley for a, th a throwdown, which I don't think most fans even know he could still do or could do it all. So it was cool to see Ron Holland getting involved in the game, making his presence felt early, playing tough defense, and creating easy baskets for the offense. So as I mentioned to you guys earlier, I'm fighting off a cold. Which is why I had to get myself a nice helping of stew. That's good. Beef stew. Isaiah Stewart, man. Heart and soul of this team, man. 13 points, 10 rebounds, 1 assist, 1 steal, no turnovers, 4 of 6 shooting, 5 of 6 in the free throw line. And a ton of intangibles. Isaiah Stewart is so important to this team, man. I have not seen one game in his career where I said to myself, Stu, you got to pick it up, man. It just doesn't happen. His motor is always running hot. And that's a skill. Having that mindset, being full tilt mentally and physically all game long, that is a skill. And that is one of his greatest skills. On one possession, he had two or three offensive rebounds and putback attempts. And he finally got the last one to go. And he got an and one. And the crowd went crazy. The crowd went crazy. And he pointed to his heart. And he said, I got this. I got this. I got this. I love that dude, man. I love that dude. And this style of play is made for the playoffs. When the play gets more physical, when possessions are so important, right? When the little things mean everything, that's when you need an Isaiah Stewart. And man, his ability to defend the lob pass is getting so much better too. He's so disruptive on it. He created quite a few turnovers off of that. There was one where it was a two-on-one lob. And he has such great instincts to make you think he's going to commit to you as, as the passer. And he backs off and disrupts the play. He's, he's getting really, really good as far as the fundamentals and his instincts around the room. He understands he may have some limitations, but how can I maximize my ability? And he's doing all of those little things to maximize his ability despite not having all of the physical gifts. And that's why you love a player like him, man. On top of all that, he's shooting 86% from the free throw line on the season. So his game complements his game right he's a physical player who demands foul calls and he takes advantage of those by knocking down his free throws so it's not just an empty possession gotta love that so for everybody who wanted him traded in years past sorry to break your heart but that's not happening anytime soon if ever this was a wild game man i i would have been so hurt if the pistons would have lost this game for so many reasons I mentioned earlier that I feel the Pistons have a good shot to win their group in the NBA Cup. And I'll break that down in a later video. But this game was so important because they now moved to 1-0 in pool play. They got three more games against three opponents who I think are all beatable. And they moved to 5-7 and seven overall in the season. So big, big win, man. Big win. Next up for the Pistons are the Milwaukee Bucks tomorrow night. Second of a back-to-back -back in Milwaukee. And I think that's a very winnable game. I think the Pistons could catch the Bucks at a bad time. Uh, they are spiraling right now. Dame and Giannis just can't seem to figure it out. And their supporting cast is just not supporting. So I think that's a very winnable game. And a win like tonight can give you the extra energy you need on the second night of a back-to-back -to, -back to go get that game. So I think they should go take care of business and I think they will. But what did you guys see that I missed? <laughs> I know I'm missing something. I know there's a lot of things that you guys saw tonight in this game that I may have missed. So drop it down below. Let's talk about every part of this game. Let's talk about what you liked, loved, and hated. Let's talk about all of it. Be sure to like this video. And once again, thank you to everybody who continues to support my channel. I love doing this for you guys. And I'm going to continue to do it either way, as you guys can see with my nose running here. But either way, I appreciate everybody's support. Appreciate you hanging with your boy. And as always, Detroit versus everybody. Peace. Let's go. Dress up, bless up, step up and get it. Lace up, face up, I'm here to win it It's for my city, and the team coming with me Headed for the championship, even if the road is long Legends pay the way for us Legends see nothing in this world can take it from us